Good afternoon. This is the Thursday, September 17, 2020 meeting of the Athens City Planning Commission. Uh, all members are present. A quorum has been established. Uh, are there any uh, members of our audience or in our telecast here, Zoomcast, uh, who wish to address the uh, Planning Commission? And if so, uh, please raise their right hand. And uh, do you swear to tell the truth to the Athens City Planning Commission as best you know it? I do. Thank you very much. Uh, disposition of minutes for September 3rd, 2020. Uh, has anyone got any comments, any changes to make? Does anyone care to make a, I'll make a motion to uh, pass the minutes. Is there a second? A second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. That's, Aye. Unanim that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, cases uh, number 20 dash. RJ. I'm sorry, yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, we need to start the meeting off right, with the public hearing first. Okay. Thank you. Forgot about that. Okay. Um, we're having a, a public meeting, uh, public hearing uh, first uh, for the Herald Avenue major subdivision. And uh, let's see, Mr. Riggs, or if you're with us, if you care to just update our audience on that uh, project, please. Yes, thank you. Um, this is a uh, final plat for the Herald Avenue subdivision. Um, and it looks like that we did, we are required to have a public hearing for this. This splits uh, three lots off of the, um, off of one parcel. Um, and uh, would be uh, what we would uh, what we would do is to take the, have those three lots, and also as part of this final plat, there's a uh, right of way dedication that, that will be uh, that will be included in that plat. Thank you. Um, first, is there any comment from uh, members of the planning commission? Okay. Uh, is there anyone who would care to address the planning commission in our audience? I'll take that as a no. Um, okay. So at this point, then uh, we would conclude the uh, public hearing portion. Am I correct? Okay. And then we can just move into the case number uh, 20-06, Herald Avenue, Major Subdivision. And Mr. Riggs has uh, already explained it. Uh, the legal notice appeared August 29, uh, 2020 in the Athens Messenger. Um, is there any comment, first of all, from uh, uh, the Planning Commission itself? Okay. Uh, anyone from our uh, audience uh, who would care to address the uh, planning commission on that uh, project? Okay. Um, would someone care to make a motion? I'll move that we recommend approval um, of case 2006 to city council. Thank you. I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Patty, that was unanimous as I see it. Thank you. Uh, going on to uh, case number 20-10, uh, the zoning designation for annexation of Old Hope Farm. And uh, Mr. Riggs, again, could you update uh, our audience? I think this would be... Uh Paul Logue. Okay. Sorry, Paul. Uh, good, good afternoon, Planning Commission. Uh, th thank you, Chair Chairman Art Sumney. Uh, yeah, the so this is a, um, a piece of real estate that the city has been working on uh, with developers for almost a year now. I was looking through my emails, and the I think the first one I had was from October of 2019. Uh, this is an affordable housing project, uh, tax credit project. Um, uh, where Woda Cooper uh, Companies, which is a, uh, a housing development company out of Columbus, is um, uh, looking to annex a piece of real estate across the street from University Estates. Uh, Joe McCabe from Woda Coopers is here to talk about this. 
Uh, the annexation, it's in process right now, and, and um, uh, the Woda Cooper's attorney, Rusty Rittenhouse, can also speak on that. I believe where we are right now is that the uh, uh, annexation has been a has been forwarded from the county commissioners so they've approved the release of land and that's been now forwarded to uh it goes to the clerk of city council debbie walker uh and as part of the annexation uh one of the first things before city council deliberates on accepting the land into the city is to request from the planning commission a recommendation for appropriate zoning uh so this is coming back to the or this is coming to the planning commission now just to look at the um potential zoning for the property my understanding from communications with representatives from Woda cooper is that their request is to do r3 which is uh, multi-unit residential zoning uh the project that they're proposing has a little bit more than 100 units of affordable housing and i believe those are two and three bedroom uh, units and uh, Mr. McCabe or Mr. Rittenhouse, I'll allow them, or I would uh, defer to them to speak more on this. Thank you, Mr. Mr. McCabe. Sure. So uh, our, our proposal is an initial uh, uh, phase of development um, that includes uh, placing 51 and 56 units straddling an existing pond at the site um, uh, that would produce an additional 107 units total uh, that we have financing secured for today. Um, it would be a uh, much needed house housing, uh, obviously in the area we've been in front of, uh, uh the disabilities or, uh, uh, accessibility commission here in the city. Um, a number of those units actually are accessible well above and beyond co uh, code. Um, it is a, an affordable housing endeavor. Um, uh, we're looking at each project or each, uh, of these initial phases, um, is is exceeding um, uh, nine million dollars in investment each. So uh, you know it's a pretty substantial investment just between the two developments, about eighteen million total, uh, with the first hundred and seven units. Um, it it is uh, a mix of one, two, and three bedroom sizes. Uh, universally designed. It will be also a LEED certified green project. Uh, we're very proud of all of our uh, most recent developments in the last decade have green ratings to them and green certified. Uh, so it'll be a pretty substantial investment. We know we'll be coming through uh, with final plan approval for planning commission based on a lot of feedback uh, Paul and others have given us at the city. And as we continue to work through uh, any of the committees or other commissions to take their uh, inclusion uh, and advice uh, and, and design details into that that final product, so it's very high quality uh, in in nature. Uh, I'd really sort of defer Rusty if you want to provide any path or any other updates uh, relevant as you see fit at this time as well. Sure, I think Mr. Rittenhouse, you may be muted, Rusty. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Still getting used to Zoom. Um, yeah, just in the way of background, this is an annexation by agreement of the, uh, or we have <coughs> previously reached an agreement between the township and the city regarding this property. Um, this creates an exp expedited type one annexation. The petition has been filed before the county commissioners and accepted and as Paul mentioned, has been uh, moved forward to uh, Debbie Walker. Um, I think it's going to stay there for a cooling off period for a, a period of time now, short of uh, what the, the commission or your commission is handling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Did you care to weigh in on? I, I would, um, as was indicated earlier, you know, th there is a, a rather substantial need for affordable housing in the city of Athens. The Affordable Housing Commission has, uh, has worked very hard on uh, not just acknowledging the fact, but also looking to see where can growth occur, where can we, where can we start to um, explore the expansion of affordable housing in the city of Athens. The city's um, Comprehensive plan speaks to this, and in particular, in this particular corridor, um, the city has limited ability to expand to the east due to the floodplain in which the city uh, um, would experience if there were growth that way. That is not the smart way to go. Uh, I think that this, this project fits well in line with that. 
Um, I am also pleased to hear that the Commission on Disabilities has been involved in this because the Commission on Disabilities has also had concern um, with development and has clearly voiced their opinion of having universally designed um, housing as we look forward, a minimum of universal design. Uh, and then also the Sustain Environment Sustainability Commission, the way and you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear uh, uh, Leeds Green that you're working on. Um, that fits within the city's, not just vision, but what I would deem to be the mission of the city of Athens as we move forward. So, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, have, I see no issues at all at this point in time with this moving forward. Okay. I have a couple questions. Uh, where would the planned ingress egress be uh, going out onto 682 from this project? So tentatively right now, we have looked to um, uh, make sure that we're not impacting the pond is immediately across. There's an existing pond that's used for stream water uh, control um, uh, for other property owners actually across the road, across 682. So uh, a connection immediately at, at, at you know, uh, University of States Boulevard would not be possible um, because of that, that existing pond needing to be retained or, or maintained in place. Um, so there would be two smaller drives. One would be off of Lord Road and one would be on 682. Uh, and it would be the furthest distance from the intersection possible uh, uh, from Lurg and 682. Okay, traffic study has not been completed yet? Uh, a traffic study has not been completed yet at this time. Um, it would be, in that case, a 51 unit impact in, in that location. So that'd be um, about 207 bedrooms? Yeah, uh, give or take, you're right. Um, in that case, though, you know, you would not necessarily, not every uh, homeowner would, would have a car. In fact, we are working with already uh, HAPCAP in dialogue with Paul uh, to re regarding example, public transportation and how to actually potentially even have uh, on-demand and uh, a bus service right into the property itself, potentially even bringing a bus onto the property. Um, and not every homeowner, uh, both we see a lot of our portfolio ends up having a lot of appeal to the senior and elderly population. The first thing we see with the senior and elderly population in our properties is the most expensive thing they have besides housing is typically a car. Um, so we expect some reduction in automobiles from both the senior population and some of the dis disabled population. Uh, right. or mobility impaired population. So we're making those accommodations as well. Um, and just even the, the way um, people come and go, they don't all leave at once or come or arrive at once. Um, so the, the impact would be de minimis uh, uh, for that, those 50 units that would be exiting. Right. Or I was just envisioning rush hours. Right. And morning and afternoon. Um, <clears throat> and then this would also, your request is also going to be a, uh, uh, for a B3, so you're planning some additional business along with? No, we, we are not requesting any B3. Uh, okay, uh, that's what I saw in the thing there. Okay, thank you. Um, so at this point then, uh, Mr. Logue, all you're asking us for is a designation of the zone itself, correct? Correct, yeah, under uh, the annexation process. Um, the uh the, f the first step the if the real estate is going to be accepted into the city it has to have zoning designation with it mm -hmm. um under and so that's the process under orc uh once it's an ex an extent or as we get closer to the annexation being accepted uh they'll be uh coming before uh the city to get approval for uh building plans and site plans etc however they can't get approval for any building plans or site plans until we there's a zoning they have to confirm that they meet the zoning designation Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions, comments? Okay. Uh, does someone care to make a motion? I move to uh, adopt the rezoning plan for this particular case. Okay. All in favor? Second. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a second. I second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Okay. Uh, that would be uh, unanimous on that, Patty. Thank you. Uh, communication, uh, the 2040 comprehensive plan 
Uh, part three continues with Mr. Loeb. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Loeb. Would you care to begin? Sure. If I may, I'll uh, uh, do a share screen so I can bring up my PowerPoint if that works. Okay. Just one second. So I was looking, I was double checking in the minutes as to where we were uh, when we stopped last week or two weeks ago, excuse me. And it appeared to me as if we were, I was wrapping up sustainability and energy uh, as far as the key, some of the key recommendations in the plan. Uh, so for today, I'll uh, begin with uh, multimodal and active transportation, the recommendations uh, from within the draft plan. Um, among those is a uh, uh, focus on, excuse me here, I'm jumping around, I have a sensitive mouse, uh, uh, identifying zoning changes with, in particular to um, our parking requirements um, to make sure that uh, all development isn't, is, is focused more towards the needs of, of us as people rather than the, um, the needs to provide space for cars. A lot of reasons for that, and I think we've uh, most Planning Commission, we've talked about that at numerous times. Uh, improve the bike and pedestrian routes throughout the city. Um, improve the built environment for people with autism spectrum disorder. And so a lot of that means like how do we develop uh, what's appropriate for sidewalks and intersections, um, things like parking lots. How, uh, uh, how can we try to bring some order to those areas um, to help people who are on the autism spectrum disorder or on the spectrum there? Um, increase the number of mobility options and improve the tran transit options that we currently have. Uh, as most of you are aware, of course, the uh, Athens Transit has grown by leaps and bounds over the last 10 years, and we want to continue to see that happen. Uh, we also, uh, one of the key recommendations has to do with um, sidewalk clearance of snow and ice. And, uh, you know, typically and historically, that's been uh, the burden and the expectation for snow and ice removal citywide for sidewalks has been, uh, that it's on the property owner to make sure that their sidewalks are clear. Oftentimes they have, they do have a lot of time with which to do that. I think it's uh, eight hours after the snowfall has stopped. Uh, at the same time, we do have a lot of people in Athens who are walking uh, every day on our sidewalks. Um, many of them have disabilities. Uh, and so uh, it's important that we figure out a policy to make sure that our sidewalks are clear and safe for people at all times. Uh, including during snow and ice events. Um, another key one is uh, looking at the uptown district and uh, reversing the one-way street patterns to make a two-way traffic pattern flow. Uh, we worked with a consultant um, to do an uptown traffic study a couple years ago, uh, and that was one of their key recommendations as far as how to make uh, uptown work better for everybody. That includes how to make it work better for uptown business and property owners, how to make it better for people who are pedestrians, how to make it better for Athens public transit, and how to make it better for motorists, as well as how to make it better for people on bikes. Um, uh, that's, there's a, a lot of opportunity there. Um, it's, it would not be uh, a cheap fix, of course, uh, so it would be a long-term goal. Um, and then another key one from a disabilities aspect is, is focusing on, we still have some brick sidewalks left in Athens, uh, se several on the west side of town. A lot of trip hazards there, uh, very frustrating for people who have a disability, uh, for wheelchairs, et cetera. Uh, and along those lines, we've, uh, myself and uh, Andrew Chickey, uh, the Deputy Service Safety Director, we've been working very closely with the Disabilities Commission to identify some of the really the small issues, at least small to most people's eyes, um, something that I, I might not even see as somebody who is, um, not, is, is uh, lucky to be able-bodied right now. Um, that being said, uh, there's very small hazards within our sidewalk infrastructure that can be um, very dangerous for somebody who's in a wheelchair or has um, a vision impairment uh, or has a broken leg or something. And so we're trying to address some of those very small issues at the same time. Uh, we also want to look at some of the traffic calming issues. Uh, how do we slow traffic within our neighborhoods? Uh, there's uh, how do we reduce the, um, the, the speeding on some of those uh, streets like Morris Avenue and May Avenue? How do we slow down traffic on the far east side uh, where they get a lot of some of the commercial traffic from East State Street ends up in their neighborhood? And then um, 
Uh, one thing we have, Andy, Andy Stone, as a um, service safety director, has been working on for a while. And I know Mayor Patterson has been active with this as well. Uh, there was uh, some momentum for a while about moving towards um, looking at pilot programs for autonomous and connected vehicles and how they would work in a city like Athens. A lot of the studies that have been done across the country have looked at uh, how they work in um, communities that have pretty good weather or are very flat with a grid network. Uh, Athens has okay weather some of the time, uh, but it also has a lot of topography challenges, uh, steep slopes, brick streets, a lot of pedestrians, a lot of jaywalkers, all of those things. And so um, uh, there has been some interest in using Athens as a, as a potential pilot community to do some autonomous AV um, uh, studies. I don't know where we are with that right now um, because of uh, so many things have shifted with COVID, but um, it seems as if there might be a good opportunity looking at AV um, to help move people around Athens, especially in Central City, Uptown Athens, and near campus, uh, once or assuming that campus is robust again with um, people and students and employees uh, in the next, hopefully in the next year or so. Is there any questions about any of that before I move on? I know I threw a lot at everybody right there. And if not, I'll uh, move on to the next section just to make sure uh, the next topic from the comprehensive plan from our visioning was uh, to make sure that uh, within the community, within our city, we're focusing on the diversity, equity and inclusion and making sure that Athens um, provides equity and provides inclusion for uh, for the citizens of Athens. One of the key things that we we identified through this plan um, is some of the things that are missing in Athens, and and we had good good discussions about how how do people make um, how do you make a city that somebody wants to call home? And one of the key things that we kept hearing was that you people need to see themselves reflected in the community in order for them to feel as if there's a place for them to fit in. And through that process, uh, we identified that. Um, uh, Athens doesn't have a lot of amenities, doesn't have a lot of options for, for, for our black community. And uh, as part of that, um, it was identified that the Mount Zion Church in Uptown Athens um, uh, should be used, could be utilized as a hub for the African-American community in Athens. Uh, as part of that, we've been working very closely with the Mount Zion Preservation Society uh, to um, to identify potential uses for that, as well as to, ad to identify the um, key issues relating to that building specifically. Uh, we've, um, I've been happy or fortunate to be part of that process over the last year, and it's been a great experience. And there's a lot of momentum moving towards that as well. And I think that's a really key part of it. Um, of course, we also want to continue with our infrastructure improvements. Um, there is discussion about making, uh, making sure that we have gender neutral restrooms. Um, those are, there's, there's a lot of benefits to having those, uh, at, although under Ohio basic building code, they're not required, uh, encouraging those and, and seeking out ways to, um, to have that with, within our, our businesses and, uh, public spaces would be key. We also heard a lot about, um, especially from s students when we did on campus, um, engagement that, um, there's a notion that there's not a lot to do in Athens for people, uh, especially young people um, um, who, who choose to be sober for whatever reason. And um, there's n and so identifying sober events uh, that that people could that families could use um, to attend uh, for students, children, et cetera, people who are under under age. Uh, would be needed in our city. Uh, there's we've looked at already some ideas on how we might do that, including um, uh, events at coffee shops, um, mapping programs to, to better show what, what is available to people besides, uh, especially young people besides uptown bars. Um, that's been really interesting. Another key issue uh, is making sure that when we do uptown gatherings and things like that, um, as well as for city staff, uh, that we have, um, that people understand the, um, the needs of people with, uh, on the autism spectrum disorder. Uh, so that we're, we provide sensory friendly uh, options for them, um, make sure that public events are inclusionary, um, especially for children uh, who, are, who are autistic, um, and so that they also can, can enjoy um, 
uh, boogie on the bricks or uh, a cruise in or something like that, as well as just events that take place at the community center, um, other other as as well. Uh, and then we also uh, there, there's a recommendation that the city council consider some tax incentives uh, for um, economic infrastructure uh, to businesses that are targeted towards some of those minority populations. Again, trying to find ways to um, to in- encourage a, a community that is more inclusive and more diverse. And then, like I just mentioned, uh, there's what's called the Six Feelings Planning Framework for Autism Spectrum Disorder. That's a really emergent. Um, or emerging planning topic right now that hasn't that communities have not really addressed historically. Uh, although Athens and a lot of other communities, we've grown by leaps and bounds when it comes to ADA requirements and making sure that we've got um, uh, uh, better facilities for people who are disabled. Uh, what's been missing from that, and as, as many of us know that um, autism, there's a lot more diagnosis of autism within our population than ever. Uh, and making sure that uh, we have a community that um, uh, gives them a little bit more safety and relieve some of the stress that they experience uh, would be really important. And like a lot of other planning aspects, uh, we've talked about uh, if you're planning a city for somebody on the autism spectrum disorder, just like if you're planning for a city for somebody who has a disability or if you're planning for seniors, uh, when, you, when you're planning for people um, who have the most need, uh, everybody benefits from that f- from that process and the improvements that you make. What are examples of sensory friendly um, activities or whatever? I don't under- I don't quite understand that. Yeah, well, um, and and I don't want to I don't I don't want to claim to be an expert on it. Um, just to be clear, I've been learning a lot about this issue. Um, my understanding is that when um, among other things is that uh, people who are on the autism spectrum, uh, they um, they can be overwhelmed by uh, stimulus, noise, um, sight, uh, just the, and they, they get disoriented really quickly in, in locations and, and things where they're not, um, where there's just a lot, lot of chaos or, or they perceive chaos more than, than I might as somebody who's neurotypical. Um, and so uh, if there's a lot of loud noise, uh, one of the idea, one, one of the concepts or the recommendations is make sure that communities have headphones available, um, noise dampening headphones, um, so they can take them out. And typically parents who have children with autism know to, they, they'll, bring a, they'll, they'll bring a bag with some things that help them to kind of um, uh, relax them and reorient them, and, um, but, but often they'll forget them. And so... Uh, you've seen, I know at uh, a, l- a lot of uh, public facilities, especially sports arenas and things like that, they will provide, um, if anybody requests it, they'll, pro- they'll provide um, uh, a sensory bag, it's called, to help somebody who has autism. Uh, additionally, a lot of places will create a space for them that's quieter. Um, so you might have a public event that has a tent set aside where um, it's away from the noise or away from the stage uh, where somebody can go and get away from away from the sound and just try to reorient themselves. Um, they might have um, uh, things that they can fidget with those fidget spinners that were very popular with kids about five or six years ago. Uh, those are initially, my understanding is those were initially designed um, to help um, people, uh, children with autism um, as something for them to benefit them. And then we also looking at, we understand from some studies that um uh, people get disoriented, like I said, when they're when they're in public spaces. Um, people with ASD also they tend to get lost quicker than somebody else would because they get overwhelmed by what they're experiencing in the built environment. And so, um, parking lots are very confusing for them. Uh, and so that was there's some recommendations on how to better design parking lots for people. Uh, there, you know, if you think about a parking lot, there's no arrows telling you where to walk. Uh, there's no safe spaces. You've got vehicles backing out. You've got people pushing shopping carts. Um, you've got, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of chaos involved there. Uh, and they can also be incredibly dangerous locations. Uh, also we had, we know that, um, uh, just walking, um, can be confusing. Uh, a lot of people, uh, who are on this autism spectrum, they, they frequently look down when they're walking. Uh, and so they don't, they miss street signage. They might not see a stop sign or a crosswalk information or even uh, information that tells you like what corner you're standing on. And 
So some cities are starting to recommend that you you do things like on the sidewalk at the corner. Uh, if you're at an intersection, uh, if you look down, you can see that there's a stop sign or it tells you that, that you're at a crosswalk or uh, that there's um, uh, two way traffic ahead. It also might tell you that you're you might see indication to let you know that you're at the corner of Court Street and State Street, for example. Uh, the benefit to some of that information, again, like I, like I said, um, when you're on the autism spectrum, you might, you, you're more likely to be looking down as you walk. I'm guilty of this as well as probably several other people on this. I am looking down at my phone sometimes when I walk. Uh, and so if I'm looking down at my phone, uh, as we know, especially if we're doing that, and if I see indication that hey, I better I better stop so I don't walk into traffic, there's a public safety benefit to uh, at, to, to me as well, um, and also to kids, of course, where signage can be up further up uh, for them. So a lot of those things have a lot of benefits to us. Did that Did that help? Sure. Something? Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mr. Chair, I I just put a link in the chat for everyone. And uh, I know the viewing audience, anyone who is watching can't see that, but it's a, it's a link to the American planning association and it has to do with autism planning and design guidelines. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. Um, RJ, I was, I was not knowledgeable in this area either, but uh, certainly trying to educate myself on um six feeling planning frameworks and how that how that works uh, i guess another good example to give you um is the the several times that i have been over to the uk in particular in london they have painted on the curbs at every crosswalk um please look to the right because all of us who yeah. live in the, <laughs> the other you know driving on the other side of the road um we all as we're pedestrians tend to look in the wrong direction when you're over in england yeah, so, that's right. So to, to Paul's point, that's a um, point well taken, planner. So Thank you. Um, mo moving on, I'm, I'm not sure how much you want me to talk this afternoon, but uh, I'll, I can, I'll keep going at least for a few more slides, if that's okay. Sure. Um, uh, we, we, we had a lot of conversations through the plan uh, with, with, with each of the neighborhoods to make sure that uh, any issues that they had within their neighborhoods are, are heard. Um, the good news is I think in the whole is that um, for the most part, our neighborhoods, uh, we didn't hear a lot of detailed problems with the exception uh, that there was issues with um, pedestrian issues, of course, uh, sidewalk issues. Um, uh, people also wanted, they wanted uh, their neighborhoods to look better, uh, landscaping, street improvements. Um, they also wanted to uh, um, uh, see, see additional park options and, and public art in their community, in their neighborhoods. So that was, uh, those are already kind of givens, I think. Um, uh, one, one issue I think citywide that we do need to focus on with our neighborhoods is making sure that we are allowing for more um, housing opportunities and choices. Um, you just did some of that this afternoon with uh, with the uh, uh, annexation discussion. That's in, so that's important. Uh, what we also know is that um, uh, there's not a lot of housing choices for people um, who aren't between the ages of 18 and 24. Uh, once once you're out of that age range, most of the housing we have is exclu exclusively single family residential. Uh, for people who want to live in apartments, there's, there hasn't been a lot of housing options historically for them. Uh, townhouses, there's very, very minimal condos and townhouses in the city. Uh, we also heard that people of all ages want to live closer to uptown. And uh, they want to have the options of walking to campus or walking uh, uptown to bars and restaurants, uh, access to libraries and public transit, parks and recreation, all of those things. People want that stuff and they want to be closer to it. We also identified that within, uh, in particular, um, uh, the west side and the near east side, that there might be some opportunity to allow for a little bit more neighborhood business in them. Uh, many people on the west side talked about uh, Frank's Bait Shop uh, as being something that they used to rely on, that they liked having. Uh, the current zoning for a place like that is, is R1, and so it can no longer be uh, operated as a business. There also used to be on Central Avenue, I think it used to be a TV repair shop or a radio repair shop. And if you see it, it's across from the public, uh, from West Elementary. 
Uh, you can tell it used to be a commercial business, and right now I think it's been converted into a rental. It doesn't look that great. Uh, people had identified those as potential places within their neighborhood where they can get some, uh, you know, some of the general necessities of their life, or possibly there's a cafe or a small restaurant or something in there. There was also a building that uh, people on the Near East Side identified. I think it's at the corner of Morris and Shannon that also used to be some sort of uh, a small retail commercial storefront with an apartment upstairs. And right now that's been converted into two apartments. Uh, people in, in that neighborhood thought that there might be an opportunity there for some business. Um, we also recommend that we make sure that within each, each neighborhood, there should be some uh, parks and recreation op options close to them. Uh, ideally that there's a, that there's a city park that you can walk to. Uh, we did hear a lot of feedback that people liked um, how the city did the Armory Park last year and uh, seeing some pocket parks uh, within each neighborhood that could uh, that kind of has that type of a look or feel to it. Just a place where you can sit, take a break, um, have it as flexible space um, where it can be programmed by people if they want. Armory Park has a stage there that if somebody wants to play their guitar, they can. Um, just kind of those little things that go a long way. Um, we also, in some of our neighborhoods, we probably have a house or two that could be, um, maybe it's not in the best of shape, um, might not be worth rehabbing. And maybe there's an opportunity there to kind of clean up a, a block or so and uh, put in something that'll draw the community in. Uh, another recommendation for our neighborhoods is to um, go through a rebranding initiative for them. Um, there's some suggestions in the plan for, for potential names for, for different neighborhoods. Uh, you know, as most of us know, we call them North side, East side, West side, South side. Uh, then there's university, university of States, which was branded as part of its project. Um, that doesn't tell you anything about that neighborhood. It doesn't tell you the history of the neighborhood or what's special about it or anything like that. Uh, it just kind of tells you, you know, just tells you what side of the city it's in. Uh, and so kind of identifying um, names for neighborhoods uh, that are kind of rooted in the history or rooted in something that matters there, whether it's an anchor building or a piece of history that um, kind of ties it together and makes it a more interesting place or at least sounds more interesting uh, would be, um, uh, I think, makes a lot of sense. Uh, some of the recommendations we had, I think the South Side uh, recommendation was to, to rename it or rebrand it as Mechanicsburg, which is what that was the name of the city or the village that was there before uh, the, the city an annexed the entire village of Mechanicsburg in, uh, in the 1950s. Uh, so kind of respecting that history of Mechanicsburg, uh, the Far East side, I think we had a few different ideas for that. Sells Park being one to try to orient it in one of the anchors, which is Sells Park. Uh, it's very close and very popular with people in that neighborhood. Uh, West side uh, discussion was about Camp, Camp Wool which is a civil war um, camp that was located at the current location of West elementary school. Uh, just little known, interesting tidbit of, you know, history about the West side of Athens and its role. Um, it's a, one of the older neighborhoods in the city and it has an interesting um, relationship to the civil war. Um, I'm going to move on to, well, here we go. Uh, do you want it? Would you like me to get into the neighborhoods specific um, recommendations today, RJ, or, why don't we uh, go ahead and save that one? Take a break. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, David, do you want to go ahead and give your report? Jump ahead of uh, Paul. David. Thanks, Good. RJ. I actually don't have anything to report to, uh, today. Okay. Terrific. Uh, Paul. Uh, only other comment to make this this afternoon. Um, uh, there is we do have a campaign that we launched uh, earlier this week to try w one last push to get uh, undergraduate students and recent graduates of OU to complete the census. Uh, Lauren Connor, one of our interns, she's she's managing that program. Uh, we're also working with DJ A Rock, who's um, has uh, Tuesday night and Saturday night live um, comedy shows and live music shows for students uh, on a, a app called Twitch. Uh, they are, they are trying to, uh, they're, they're using that to try to get spread the word about uh, the census. Uh, the campaign that Lauren launched this week, I was uh, 
pleased to see that just from that, we already had uh, 50, over 50 people confirm that they, they just fin did the census this week because of that campaign. Uh, and within them, several of them were doing it for their roommates as well. So it looked to me like we probably had about 150 uh, additional people uh, participate in the census. So that was good. We've got until September 30th to get our census count in. Uh, we also provided to the Census Bureau uh, the, um, the information for uh, the roughly the 25 or 30 biggest landlords in Athens to try to arrange directly with the Census Bureau to touch base with those landlords to collect information. Uh, the landlord list that I gave to them this uh, last week, uh, it, or this week, excuse me, it has, um, uh, there's 9, 000, about 9,500 people living in those units from roughly 30 different landlords around Athens. So that is our largest key block is those under undergraduate census blocks. And so we've got we've, the Census Bureau and what the city's marketing strategy, we've got the information out there to try to get this all cleaned up. And hopefully the Census Bureau is, is working really hard to make sure that they're, they're giving us an accurate and complete count. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Um, an opportunity for citizens to speak on items not covered on today's agenda. We have anything on the sides there? Okay. Um, announcements and other business. Mr. Mayor, anything? To unmute. Um, I don't have anything other than to put an exclamation mark on what uh, the city planner mentioned about the census. You know, the shot clock is running and it's running down quickly. September 30th is the last day in which someone can be enumerated. Um, the city as a whole is running at about 58.1% uh, in comparison to the state, which is currently running at 69.9. Uh, we do have a couple, at least one census tract that is doing better than we did in 2010. Uh, and um, I might as well give props to the south side of the city for, for uh, helping push that forward. Uh, but we certainly have, as Paul indicated, the uh, a couple census tracts that are heavily student occupied to where we're still woefully low uh, in terms of those numbers. So um, just wanted to keep that reminder pushing that out there to everybody that we do have until the 30, 30th of September, um, even though there will be uh, a little more than a thousand individuals moving back into the residence halls at Ohio University. That uh, is basically two days before the end of that enumeration period. Uh, so we need to do everything we can now. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? Okay, our next meeting will be October 1st, uh, 2020. And with the business of the Athens City Planning Commission uh, complete, this meeting stands adjourned.